Welcome back to Hackcode. In this video, we're tackling an essential problem for coding interviews, climbing stairs. This problem is great for learning dynamic programming and Fibonacci series concept. We will explore four approaches, recursion, dynamic programming top-down approach, and dynamic programming bottom-up approach with WOF N space, and dynamic programming bottom-up approach with WOF 1 space automation. Let's break down the problem step by step and understand how the solutions work. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. So what is a problem statement? You are climbing a staircase. It takes N step to reach the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? So basically here the question asks us to find the number of ways we can climb to the top. And to reach each step we have only two options. We can reach it from the before step or two steps before. So basically uh, like we have for a given step there are two possible combinations. That's what the intention is. So let's look at examples here. So in example one we have n is equals to two. That means that we have a staircase having two steps. And then output is given as two. Why? Because there are two ways to climb to the top. So one step plus one step or two steps, only two ways, right? So basically here only two steps are there. So for that, like how can we reach the like either by having one or one step and then directly two steps. That's a two ways. That's why we written two. So let's look at example two. Here n is equal to three. That means that we have three steps. So here we can see that there would be more ways to climb it. So how many ways to climb it? Here there are three ways to climb to the top. So first is one step plus one step plus one step. And next is one step plus two step and two steps plus one step. It's a variation of this second. Okay. So basically we just need to calculate the number of ways to reach the top. Okay. That can be either from one step or two steps. Very simple. So what are constraints here? N is the enclosure range of one to 45. Okay. That means that length of the array is in the enclosure range of one to 45. So this is the boilerplate code given where we have a method climb states, which takes N and returns the integer. This integer is what? How many ways to climb the top? Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you are prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you are ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. So approach one, recursion. So what is the intuition here? The recursive approach directly represents the problem by considering the number of ways to climb n stairs as a sum of ways to climb the n minus one stairs and n minus two stairs. This reflects two choices available at each step, taking one step or two steps. So guys, if you observe this, basically this is the translation of our problem stream into solution. They said right here, each time you can climb either one step or two steps. So that means we can reach n from two ways either from n minus 1 or n minus 2. So it also means that the number of phase to climb n is equal to the sum of number of phase to climb n minus 1 and n minus 2. So simple, right? We just put our problem statement as solution. So this is just observation, nothing much. So what is algorithm here? Define a recursive function that takes the number of states n. Step 2, base cases. Without this, it would be a recursion depth exceeded error for any recursive program. Basically, it keeps on calling without stopping. Okay, for that reason, we have to have a base case where the function has to stop. So the base case here are n is equal to zero. So n is equal to zero means like we don't have any states. So here only one way possible is to stay at ground or like when we have n is equal to one, that is only one step have. In that case also we have only one way. We have to claim one step at the time. So in this case we return one. So this basically when n is equal to zero or one, we have to return one. So that's the only way possible, right? So that's why we have this base case. Greater than one, return the sum of recursive calls for n minus one and n minus two. So this is just a normal case where we have n greater than one. In that case, we have the recursive equation defined as number of ways to reach n is, is equals to number of ways to reach n minus one plus number of ways to reach n minus two. We just discussed here, right? So let's look into the code. It's just what we discussed as algorithm. So step one, we just have the base cases here. For n is equals to zero or n is equals to one, we return one. Basically, these are the cases where we have either no steps or one step. So only one way possible in both cases as we discussed, so we return one. So other cases, recursive case. So for this cases, we just need to return climb stairs of n minus one plus climb stairs of n minus two. This recursively keeps on calling and it would start solving once it reaches the base cases. So let's look into how does this recursive code works. So firstly, we have n is equals to three from the given example two. In that case, we'll get a call to climb stairs for n is equals to three. Since three is not equal to zero or not equal to one, we'll return this one, climb stairs of two and climb stairs of one. So we'll make a call for climb stairs of two and climb stairs of one. So this climb stairs of two will call climb stairs of one and climb stairs of zero. So this is the base case where the actual processing happens. So 
as we keep on calling we hit the base case then only we get the actual processing started okay so we'll get the actual values populated from there itself so here this returns one so this step process and then what it returns two basically uh, climb size of one is what one and then climb size of zero is what one so one plus one is two so we get the result for climb size of two and similarly here for climb size of one we return one so here the final result of climb size of three is what two plus one three so basically the answers populate from the bottom stairs okay when we hit the bottom case or the base case we keep our recursion stack processed so this is called as a recursion stack because firstly we store n is equals to 3 in our recursion stack and then n is equals to 2 and then we store for n is equals to 1 and then n is equals to 0 okay so basically here these two are the base cases so firstly these two cases will be processed so that's why it's a last in first out right so hence it's called a stack so that's why it's a recursion stack so first these two will be processed and then this will be processed and then this will be processed so here the first element is processed last so that's why it's a recursion stack okay hope you got idea of how does this code work with the recursive example so let's look into complexes the time complex is o of 2 power n because the function makes two calls for each non-base case leading to the exponential growth so that means that for a given step uh, we can either climb this or this so basically here two possibilities for n steps that's why it's 2 power n okay the space complex is o of n as we see here our recursion stack would be of length n so that's why the space complex is o of n okay so i got the code ready here let me try running this so this is accepted but when we try submitting it uh, it would be not accepted because it's a time limit exceeded obviously 2 power n won't be scalable for the largest data sets so when the length of the array is lost we can't get the scale so let's see that in action so we see that only 21 out of 45 test cases are passed and for all the rest test cases it would be time and accelerate because uh, here uh, n is greater so for n is equals to 44 we have 2 power n operations which is 2 power 44 that is greater than 10 power 8 operations so we can only perform 10 power 8 operations per second so that's why we had to scale our solution to fit for the larger array length for that sake we have to consider the dynamic programming so let's look into that approach approach to dynamic programming so what are the intuition here this approach uses memoization to store results of sub problems preventing redundant calculations it builds upon the recursive structure but caches the results to improve efficiency the term top down refers to the way we break down the problem from the top level that is a total stage down to the bottom case that is a few stages. so what does this algorithm says so basically it means so basically it says that we are avoiding the recalculation of these sub problems so what are sub problems here so take n is equals to 4 so for n is equals to 4 the sub problems are what n is equals to 3 n is equals to 2 n is equals to 1 and n is equals to 0 so for these cases we are calculating this sub problems again and again so here if you see for n is equals to 2 we call two times right so for n is equals to 4 we already call that for n is equals to 3 and n is equals to 2 but this n is equals to 2 cases are how many these are two such 1 and 2 so and for n is equals to 1 we have three such 1 2 3 and for n is equals to 0 we have two cases here so given that for length 4 only we have all these sub problems calculated again and again so let's take for case of n is equals to 44 where we saw our test case failing in that case we would have number of such sub problems which should be recomputed again and again what if we store this sub problem result so that we just can send that result instead of calling this recursive function again so that means to say that we avoid the recomputation again okay so that's what this approach is basically everything is same this is top down because we break the problem down from the top level to the bottom basically we build the problem once we get the base cases right since it's a recursion as we've seen in a previous approach we start processing the recursive stack from the bottom cases or the base cases so that's why it's top down approach so what is algorithm here step one we create an array to store the results of previously completed states okay here we discussed right we need to have something for storage of our results so that's why we're creating an array for that purpose in step two we define a recursive function that checks if the result is already cached so this is that optimization we are doing here okay we having a recursive function but here we are caching the results if we compute it once step three is when we don't have result cached we compute it using the same logic as a recursive approach but we store the result in the cache before returning it okay so that way we would avoid recomputing of this problem again when we encounter it so let's look into the code it's just what we discussed as a steps here so here first step what we have is initializing our cache which is memo so here we are initializing the array of length n plus one filled with all zeros okay 
so this is for our caching purpose step two we define a recursive function this is same as a previous approach okay only for the base cases we just return one for every non-base cases we return from cache okay. we're checking if mem of n not equal to zero that means to say that we're checking if this is a pre-computed result if this already solved then this would have been filled and it won't be zero okay that's why we're checking if not equal to zero okay in that case we just return memo of n because we already computed this one so in the cases where this is equal to zero that means that we have not computed it so in that case we have to compute it so that case we just call climb of n minus one plus climb of n minus two and then after that we store our results into memo of n okay so after storing we just return the memo of n so just before returning it we just store it this is what the algorithm says right so we just translate it into code so at the end we just return in the climb of one which is our recursive function so inside our recursive function we will be using our memo so firstly this function checks if we already computed this sub problem so if this is already computed it means that it is not equal to zero in that case we just return that memo of n else we just compute it and store it before returning okay that's what this does so I hope you got a clear idea of how to solve this problem using dynamic programming top down approach. What are complexes here? The time complex is O of n because each state value is computed once and the space complex is O of n because the space required for the memorization array. So basically if n is equal to 1, we'll form an array with length 1. If n is equal to 2, we form an array with length 2. So basically this keeps on scaling with the input. That's why we have space complexes O of n. I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. So it's accepted for these two cases. Let me try summon this. So this is accepted for all the cases we have. That's the power of optimization here. Okay. Approach the dynamic program with bottom up fashion. So what is the intuition here? The bottom up approach iteratively computes the number of ways to climb states starting from the base cases. It builds the solution incrementally using an array to store the results for each state. So instead of processing from the top to down, we are going from bottom to up. That means that uh, here we build the array from the scratch cases. Okay. So here the algorithm is we create an array to store the number of ways to climb each state up to n. And in step two, we insert the base cases. That is one way to climb zero or one state. Okay. We just discussed right previously. In step three, we loop from two to n, updating the array based on the sum of the last two values. Okay. So basically here we are filling the array. At each index of this array, it will represent the ways to climb till that index. Okay. So let's look into code. It's just a translation of algorithm we have. So in step one, we hand in the base cases. This we know already, right? For n is equal to zero or one, we return one. In step two, we initialize the array. Okay. So this is the same thing as before. We just initialize the DP array of length n plus one filled with all zeros. Next is we are filling our base cases, which is zero and one. So here for these cases, we don't need to compute, right? We just can directly store it. That's why we're filling the zero and one. So these are base cases, which we have, and we just storing one to these both indexes. Okay. If you get it out that why we have this filling again, because the state of the array should represent the number of ways to climb till that particular index. That is the goal. That's why we have this fill here. If we don't fill this, we can't compute the further cases. Here we have base cases defined because we don't need to form the array for these two cases. We can just return one. But for computation further results, we want this to be filled. Then only we can compute the further cases, right? That's why we have this. In step three, we just iterate to compute the number of phase. This is for cases where n greater than or equals to two, okay? So for i in range two to n plus one, we're just filling this array. So why n plus one? We should be filling till n, right? That's why we have to consider n plus one because this is exclusive range, okay? So we are just using the formula. We have dp of i is equal to dp of i minus one plus dp of i minus two. Why? Because the number of ways to reach the i step is basically the number of ways to reach the i minus one step and i minus two step. Okay. We're just using the same formula and filling out dp array. At the end, we're just setting the dp of n for a given n. Okay. So what are the complexes here? The time complex is o of n. We compute the number of ways in a single pass and the space complex is o of n. So basically the space is used for the array storing the results. That's why we have it often. We just discussed right all these things. So I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. So this is accepted for these two cases. Let me just submit in this. So this is accepted for all the cases we have. Okay. Approach for dynamic program with bottom up approach, but with O of one space complexity. So guys, this is the most optimized solution for this. Your interviewer would be pretty much impressed if all this problem using this approach. The reason why I had told you other two optimization approaches because that would give you idea to form this approach. You can't directly get to this approach without knowing these two approaches we had discussed, right?
so that's why uh, we just need to go to that and then only we'll get the idea of how we form this okay so what is the intuition here this approach is an optimization of previous bottom-up approach instead of storing all the computed values we only keep track of the last two computed values which is sufficient to calculate the next value that is true right basically here we were using only dp of i minus one and dp of i minus two what if we have these two values stored then we don't need to fill all this array right that means that we are saving up our space so the algorithm is same is just that we use only two variables instead of array so whatever the job we were doing using the array can be done using the two variables only so let's look into algorithm here first step is to handle the base cases for n being zero or one this is very much required and we know why it's required so here in step two we insert the two variables first and second to show the number of fish to climb the last two stairs here both are initialized to one because there is only one way to climb zero or one stair okay so this we know in step three we loop from 2 to n updating the variables at each step based on the previous two values this is same as previous approach but here we just use the two variables we created instead of the array so here the new first will be the old second basically the old second value stores the number of ways to climb the last stairs and then the new second will be the sum of the old first and the second this is the total number of ways to climb to the current stair which is the sum of ways to climb to the last two stairs so guys there's nothing fancy i just put in a verbose format so basically we know right to reach the stair n we have to be computing it from n minus 1 plus n minus 2 so here n minus 1 and n minus 2 are what our first and second variables so that's what here so we're just storing our sum of the first and second value to the second okay second value is what shows the current index in our db if we compare it okay the first is what our previous thing so db of i minus 1 we can say okay in step 4 we just written the last computer value which is our second so this stores our current value okay so let's look into code this is basically the same steps we just discussed but in form of code okay so here i'll show you in comparison with previous approach we had so here first step remains same handling the base cases in step two we initialize the variables instead of declaring the array we know right we just don't want to store for every single thing but we just need to store only for the last two that's what we're using right that's why we declare two variables here and here we are filling one one because this is the base cases we just filled here right same thing we just filling it here okay so step three we try to compute the number of fish so here we looping in the same range that is two to n plus one that is same as here and then here instead of using this dprf we just getting the work done using these two variables so we just had this explained here so here the new first whatever have we have first for the current iteration is equals to old second that is the ways to climb till last year okay the new second that is this second is equals to the old first plus old second basically total number of ways to climb to the current stair so here uh, we store in the states in only two values so this second is same as our dp of i okay and the first is same as our dp of i minus one which is the ways to climb the last step so the number of ways to climb the current state is dependent by second as we discussed okay so at the end we just return the second so what are complexes here the time complex is o of n we compute the number of phase in a single pass so here we just using a single for loop right and we are processing each element only once the space complex is o of one because only a constant number of spaces for these two variables and it is not some array or some data structure that goes with the size of the input that's why it's o of one space i got the code ready here let me try running this so this solution is accepted for the two cases let me try submitting this So cool, this is accept solution and beats eighty three percent of users. So congrats, guys! You just learned the four approaches to solve this problem. So if you solve this question using this fourth approach, your interview would be pretty much impressed. This one of the fundamental questions to learn the dynamic programming, and I told you all four approaches possible here. Hope this breakdown helps you understand the dynamic programming patterns we have, and all the best. And this is a wrap on solving the climbing stairs problem using four different approaches. If you found this breakdown useful, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video, spread the word to your fellow coders, and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials. Also, do follow on Instagram for latest updates. See you in the next one.